So people have been wondering where I've been. I've been regenerating. You don't understand what that means? Then just listen to this. I'm a word play. The stats the average man's vertebrae. Shout out to my ten tri partners, baby Odole. When we combine, they considering us a mass threat. Blacks, natives, Mayas, Incas, and the Aztecs. You think it's far fetched? You got to be kidding me. These same niggas saying Santa sliding down their chin. Look. When it comes to justice, they just ignore us. But watch everything we do through the eye of horrors. This piss for us, where we at, but where they at is gorgeous. I'm setting flames to these churches with Caesar Borgia. Got the duty of man, camp down in Georgia. Hold it down, keep the faith, the most high is gonna reward you. I don't beef with my Hebrew peeps. I keep a cordial from a chosen stock. And you got sucks to be you. Yeah, the number is significant. While Satan's running wild, I'm trying to focus on my discipline. Moving like a whirlwind, I'm fighting till the world. World wins to understand what that means. It's Isaiah 45 17. Aristocrat genes, kings and queens, but these Edomites be pulling our strings. I cut the cords in 94, avoid the bull like a matador. But if it's beef, I got an army of carnivores. Ric Flair, figure four, doors up the hinge. I got the gird with the drip, and it's matching my friends. I'm not friendly. I was taught to prove a friend. I'm set apart and don't give a damn about trends or your timelines, your Bentley or your high rise. Detonate your enterprise that's full of lies. Pull up and stop and bust more shots. And when I do, it be a genocide like old pot. And that's real history. Show me a white Jew, I'll solve the Bigfoot mystery. It's not happening. You stuck in the case of fatal attraction. Both action with the words of the Lord when I be rapping. Catch your breath. Catch your breath. Line your target up. Line target up. People need you. People Let's go. You. Cry loud. I cry loud. Uh huh. Yeah. You wreck like this. All right, here we go. It's that time. It's that time, y'all. You know what? It's not that time. You know, hold on. <laughs> Give me one second. now i think it's time i think it's that time shalom shalom shabbat shalom uh to the 12 tribes of israel it's your boy iq amath i acquire as a mouse unknown just call me your brother at the end of the day it's another time for that Ep messengers of the Ep i mean um phew, don't shoot the messenger all right episode number four uh trying to keep consistent with the content um i said earlier this week i was going to try to go live again this week um so all praise honor and glory to the most i was able to do so um hopefully everybody is as a you know enjoying a sabbath getting um getting some good rest in getting some studying in uh doing whatever you do on the sabbath so long as it's lawful it's all good all praises um uh, you know so it's that time again uh want to hit on a couple of things 
uh, this evening. We want to look at uh, you know, it's a little late night hype for some of y'all that's in, not in this particular uh, coastal zone. Um, some of y'all that's like 11, almost 12 o'clock. Uh, those that's in my district, or my area, you know, it's only uh, about 850, you know. But uh, nonetheless, it's always a good time to bring out some of this uh, information and this word, you know, to our people. So uh, I'm going to do so. I want to uh, look at a couple of things, man. This week has been kind of wild. Uh, it's been a blessed week, though. Had a good um, uh, feast of Nicanor, uh, good feast of Perim. Um, all praise on and glory for that. So that's always been a, a, a good highlight of the week. Uh, but for some reason, you know, there's always some some attachments that come along with it. You know, uh, just a draining, draining type of week, too. Could be from, uh, you know, partying too hard as well. But, uh, <laughs> you know, either way, it's all good. I'll praise to the most high. But um, nonetheless, uh, interesting things went on this week. You know, um, Glass Joe, 36 days into his presidency, he's already dropping bombs. Uh, you guys still satisfied with 2021 <laughs> you, you still happy with your choice you bootlegging negroes that's out there voting democrat praying for change and what do you get another warmonger your taxes is going up gas going up you know more hunger down there in texas and, and in the south catastrophes hitting the hitting, hitting the coastal regions i mean what are we talking about this, this is what we got to start examining so uh without further ado i want to go ahead and uh start getting busy let me share my screen so we can um, look at some of these things and uh, bring some enlightenment and some truth to the uh, to the table. All right. For those who haven't already, I know, uh, you know, some of y'all might be late on getting this. Uh, it's all good. Uh, I do it for the people. I do it for my brothers and my sisters. Whoever finds the information and the content useful, all praise, honor, and glory to the most high. Do me a favor. If you don't, hit the like button. Hit the dislike button. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, share it to somebody who you think may uh find this information informative helpful or what have you but um nonetheless uh do what you need to do in order to continually promote the word um so give me one second and i'm gonna go ahead and get started i'll be right back Let's see where we at here. Let me put my cam back on. It's all right, y'all. Y'all can come on in. Don't be scared of the light. You can come on in. Uh, I can only visibly see. I think the posts that come on YouTube. Any brothers and sisters that's on uh, Facebook that's tuning in. If I don't acknowledge your comment, it's because I can't see it. I don't have enough. Uh, technology to do so but uh don't take offense to it shalom shalom to you uh, but uh let me get let me get to this thing man where's my uh where's my cam man all right there we go all right so it's that time let's let's get to this uh this little powerpoint i'm gonna look at some things all right so again 36 days into his presidency, maybe even uh, 37, 38, something like that. Less than 40 days. Your man Glass Joe, you know, already made the call, dropped bombs on Syria. Um, so we're in the midst of a, uh, a war again. You know, that's one thing that, um, you know, America and Esau, 
uh, thrives on is war. You know, when you're looking at an, an economy right now that's questionable, that's dealing with a lot of different issues, you see the fluctuating uh, markets. The stock market is up one week. You know, Bitcoin and, and uh, cryptocurrencies is up the next. Then the precious metals is going up. Then it just goes back into to a cycle. You know, Wall Street goes back down. Bitcoin's up. Bitcoin's down. Uh, precious metals is up. So this fluctuating economy has got things all kind of twisted, you know, but the one thing that they always say makes money is war. Uh, there was a, uh, I believe I, I gave reference to a um, documentary called South of the Border. And uh, that's uh, from um, Oliver Stone, Oliver Stone. So I don't know if any of y'all got a chance to check that out, but if you haven't, you're sleeping on it. South of the Border, I believe it's on YouTube, check it out. And in that um, documentary, George Bush Jr., uh, Baby Bush, he, he told the uh, Argentinian president that uh, I believe it was the Argentine president. Um, they were having economic troubles. He said, but look, the best way to make money is through war. Now, that's how Esau has maintained, you know, his power dominance over all, all, all of the rest of the world to be able to bully and to manipulate markets, um, you know, to ramp up the reasonings for. Uh, military support from other countries who's going to pay for uh, weapons and, and things of that nature. So they're going to get paid off of uh, any particular, these particular contracts or what have you. So it's no surprise now to see that America is in the position that it's in, that the next result is to continually stay in wars. You know, there's still Afghanistan that's still going on. You still got Iraq still going on. You still got issues over there in Libya. You still got Afrikan going on over there in Africa. Um, you know, there's always the rumblings of war in the Middle East. So here we go. Uh, Biden. But this is not so much regarding the bombing, because that's, you know, that's kind of uh, news that everybody should have been hip to as of yesterday. But nonetheless, this is just showing you the hypocritical nature of, uh, you know, uh, oh, Biden, because here you he is from 2016 or 2019 that he made a tweet talking about George, I mean, talking about Donald Trump and him being erratic and thinking about bombing of uh, the Middle East and going to war. But I'm going to read it. All right. So Biden and Jen Paskey are branded hypocrites after their old tweet slamming Trump's Middle East airstrikes resurfaced following U.S. bombing raid on Syria that killed 22. Oh, OK. So Biden and his press chief attacked Trump's military action in the Middle East. April of 2017, Paskey wrote. Assad is a brutal dictator, but Syria is a sovereign country. Now hear that? Syria is a sovereign country, right? Uh, Biden in 2019 called Trump erratic and impul impulsive over tensions with Iran. No president should order a military strike without fully understanding the consequences, he said. Trump, in fact, pulled out of those airstrikes. So now it's letting you know Trump pulled out. But look what his tweet is. And here's his tweet. Uh, Trump's erratic, impulsive actions are the last thing we need as a commander in chief. No president should order a military strike without fully understanding the consequences. We don't need another war in the Middle East. But Trump's actions take <laughs> toward Iran only make that more likely. Now, here's the hypocrite. Here's the lie. Again, white man speak with forked tongue uh, on the rampage again. He's saying they, they said earlier, Syria is a sovereign country, meaning they're a separate country. That should be operating in their own diplomacy. And what did they do? They went and bombed them yesterday. Killed 22. But that's scriptural. Look at this in uh, Sirach. Book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 10. Uh, it says, uh, a, wise, a wise judge will instruct his people, and the government of a prudent man is well-ordered. So in order to have a, um, a prudent and a well-established government, the man in charge has to be in order. OK, it says as the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. So in like manner, the way that Biden is, all of his underlings underneath of him is going to be the same way. This is why you have uh, Obama 2.0 or the O'Biden campaign, as I like to call it, because he was an underling of Obama. Now he's going to go and continue on in the same fashion. Uh, and then it says, and what manner of a man of the ruler of a city is such are all they that dwell therein. So is it any surprise that his press chief uh, was in alignment with him and both of them are being labeled hypocrites. Let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs 29 and 12. So here he goes. He's off to a, he's off to a fast paced start. He's getting the jabs ready. He lied about, you know, he lied about his deliverance of, of, of that little stimulus for y'all, you know, 
uh, he's going to war. He's enabling the Scrabble gang, as we're going to get into a little bit more about them uh, and the, all of the hypocrisies that we're seeing, you know, coming out of this uh, this particular campaign. This is why we're telling our people, you know, get out of politics. Get out of thinking that your vote is going to count. Get out of thinking that you're going to make a change. Get out of thinking that rallying and marching is going to actually provide some sort of stimu uh, stimulation within the um, within the community. All that is out of here. If you don't lock into this Bible, this right here, yeah, this right here, that's it. This is your last stand, okay? You're going to wait till the Most High breaks you down to your knees so that you have no other options but to look up. I would rather choose to get it ahead of time and get prepared now, okay? Because at the end of the day, all we're looking at is a completely oppressive government. Everything else is going to come down. It's going to be more warfare. It's going to be more economic collapse. It's going to be more starvation. It's going to be more oppression. It's going to be more um, medical tyranny. You know, all of that is coming. Okay. Uh, Proverbs 29 and 12, it says, if a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. Now, if this isn't the essence of seeing somebody looked at as a hypocrite or a liar i already brought up the point he's already been looked at as a liar number one uh there's a whole compilation of things that he lied about um on youtube this dude said that he uh marched with um martin luther king and then he doubled down and he, he came back later and said i never um i never was into uh civil rights i never did any activism he also said that uh what is it what else did he say uh, there's a whole compilation of him stealing speeches from um john f Ken kennedy when he ran for president in 1988 so he's a plagiarist he's a liar you know he told everybody you vote me in and uh what did he say january 6th you vote me in the checks is in the mail <laughs> have you seen them yet <laughs> all you hearing about is uh wh wh where it's going back and forth within um within congress waiting for approval you know so we're seeing more lies uh based and ingratiated within this man but this is the devil for you you know do you need more proof the most high is telling you that the, the so-called white man is the devil meaning what a deceiver stop thinking in your heads for those of you who's not hip to the game you looking for the man with the horns and the and the, and the pitchfork and the tail and the hoofs on the feet you know down in the midst of uh in the middle of the in the middle of the earth waiting to burn you no a devil is a deceiver are there black devils heck yeah there are deceivers all over the place but he is the primary one who fuels the fire and fuels the flames of hypocrisy lies rape murder stealing everything he knows no bounds when it comes down to wickedness he's going to do whatever it takes to get what he wants okay so now we're seeing at one minute he's tearing down trump you know, uh, planning on going into a military airstrike in the Middle East, which Trump ended up calling off. And then he goes and does the same thing that he talk, told, told him not to do, being erratic and impulsive. So those are two things that he described as a leader who did the action that he did yesterday. He made the call. He pushed the button. So he's letting you know I'm erratic. I'm impulsive. <laughs> and uh, what else did he say? And I don't have any understanding about the consequences of what could happen. But for us, prophetically, those who send the truth, we say all praise to the most high. Good. Bring it on. Because it's only going to lead to more uh, judgment. Okay, let's move on. Scrabble gang. Here they go again. Uh, three Republicans cross the aisle. See, the Republicans, you know, they're supposed to be the conservatives. They're supposed to be the ones that's, you know, standing on some sort of evangelical biblical principles. They're crossing the line. They're breaking down. Cross over the line. The Democrats... Uh, passed the LGBTQ Equality Act that critics say is an attack on religious freedom. Hear that? So for those of us who standing up for the law, those of us who stand up, look. Leviticus 2013. Let me just read that real quick. Y'all gonna trip when I play this other uh, this other clip in this other video. Leviticus 20 and 13. And that reads... If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. Both of them have committed an abomination. If a man lies with a man like he should be with a woman, you've committed a heinous, abominable, disgusting act in the eyes of the Most High. And it says, they shall surely be put to death. This is not me saying this. I'm following what the word says. 
I'm in agreement with what the word says, okay? Because you're going to see some more foolishness as we go on. And why does this make sense? It says, they shall be put to death, their blood shall be upon them. Okay, so they're going to be uh, revolving around their own sinful acts. Okay, maybe that's not enough. Maybe that's not enough. Uh, it says, this is an attack against religious freedom. Because you know what? Sooner or later, I won't be able to read this to y'all. I won't be able to, you won't be able to read this without uh, comprehensive action being taken against you. Why? Because the gang is in control. The gang is mobbing right now. They pushing the line, as they say, in the streets. <laughs> you see them? Look, look at the picture. They pushing the line. Pride. Mm. Go up before destruction, though. Thus saith the Lord. Uh, let's read Romans. Romans 1. It says, uh, who changed the truth of the most high into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who was blessed forever. Amen. Now it's talking about those who's changed things that's corruptible into incorruptible. It's talking about those who um, engage in manners of uncleanness and lust. It said they changed the truth of the most high into a lie. What did they say? God's going to set me any way that I am. You know, God loves me how I am. He created me. He made me this way. If you haven't seen my um. My, my, my class on the Scrabble gang, go back and go check it out. You're going to see all of the information why we know that this is not the act of the Most High. Okay. The Most High, the scriptures even say that He created man to be upright, not crooked and bent over, busting it open with your little boy bussies and all of that. No, the Most High didn't give you that, that spirit. That's right here in this next one. For the Most High call, uh, gave, for excuse me, for this cause, the Most High gave them up. Unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into the into that which is against nature. So, as they're running down and they're saying, "I kissed the girl and I liked it," you know, you hearing all the whatever, whatever all these other little songs going on. I can't even get with it, you know. So I dare dare me to quote quote some of these little uh, lyrics from these um from these females that's wilding out. The men is all all, all out here wilding out. But you see the quote? You see how they're moving in these streets? But guess what? Let's read this. Book of Sirach, uh, chapter 10. And uh, it says, uh, verse 12. The beginning of pride is when one departed from the Most High and his heart is turned away from his maker. So so you see that? That's, that's what they're doing. They're acknowledging they're turning away from the Most High. That's an act of rebellion. That's why the Most High said they're an abomination because they push the line and they start infiltrating into all circles of life, wanting everyone to do the same thing, separating from the Most High with their vile affections, the prideful mind states, you know, the willful acts that they decide to go out there and commit and do, you know, even if you feel like internally, man, I'm, I'm jacked up. I, I went into it, you know, the chemical imbalances, the hormones, the everything else, you know. That may you may be affected by that. You can repent from it, and you have to have a lot of self discipline to not engage in the effeminate acts and in the in the actual sexual acts. You can do that, and pray for the Most High to receive your repentance and righteousness and truth. But no, they want to pr prance and, and parade down these streets uh, to separate themselves from the Most High. It says the beginning of pride is when one departed from the Most High and his heart is turned away from his Maker. For pride is the beginning of sin, and he that hath it shall pour out abomination. So when you see them rolling down these streets, man, they hijacked the, they hijacked the um again the covenant of the rainbow. They hijacked that in an acknowledgement of defiance, saying that they're not going to be destroyed because that's what the covenant was based upon. The Most High not destroying the earth anymore by water. He said that's what the rainbow represented. Anytime you see that on a rainy day, and you see that rainbow, the Most High is reminding you that I saved this place i'm not gonna do it again in this method the next one's coming through fire he said the only way we can purge this type of crap out is through flames for pride is the beginning of sin and he that hath it shall pour out abomination and therefore the lord shall uh the lord brought upon them strange calamities and overthrew them utterly okay so you're seeing what's going on uh while they're being empowered you know negroes are still getting shot in the street did you see um the brother uh man I forgot the brother's name, but he was up north. He, li he lived up north in uh, New York. Uh, he was um, stripped down in the middle of the street. Um, no, he, he was already having a mental episode. Raining outside. He was already outside naked. The police came up on him, threw a hood on him, 
suffocated him, put him to death, right? Two days ago, they just said the cops are exonerated. No problems, no corruption, no issues. Everything was done by the book. I've never seen anything done by the book like that. They had to do in the street, butt naked. I mean, clearly disarmed, handcuffed, threw the hood over him. And then it's raining. And if you know anything about waterboarding, when you throw a, a cloth or something on your face and you pour water on it, you cannot breathe. That's how they've been torturing all them Arabs and them Ishmaelites over there in Guantanamo Bay. You know, doing all that torture on the bush. That's what they're doing. And they went and killed that brother up there in upstate New York. I think it was in Rochester, New York. Cops just got off. What about Breonna Taylor? Any, anything happened with that? No, they let them cops off. I think two of them, they fired. But guess what? They're just going to do just like the Catholic Church does. Get permission to another place. They'll find some work somewhere else. In some old small little hick town in the mid Midwest or down south somewhere who will embrace them and say, good job. We are hired you. We'll hire you. You know, this is what's going on. While, while we're not seeing any of that, uh, any, any justice for that under the old, old Biden campaign. But you seeing them getting exalted. You still waiting for you. You still waiting for him to do something. As many people as still got questions about what did Obama do. You think that his underling is going to do something for you? Now wake up. Look at this. Demi Lovato. Uh, I, I don't know too much about her. I know she's a singer or whatnot. Um, but she retweeted this post on, on her Instagram. And look what she's look what she's endorsing. Now see that here go the Scrabble Gang. Now that they've um, you know, started uh, activating their entertainers now. The, those that's in the entertainment field, they activated them. Now they're letting them use their voices, using their platforms, using their influence to start putting in uh, more work. But look at this. Demi Lovato brands gender reveal parties transphobic because they imply there are only two sexes for a baby. Hello? Did you, did you read it the same thing that I did? She said that gender reveal parties are transphobic because they imply there are only two sexes for a baby. Wow. Wow. I mean, you're talking Twilight Zone level foolishness. Do, do, do. Okay. You know what? I heard that the, the I heard the girl, Demi Lovato, has got a, you know, she she's a dope fiend. And, and she's had problems with, with drugs. Uh, you know, she's um even had brain damage from having seizures over drugs or something like that. I'm going to blame this on the drugs. It, it's got to be. It's got to be the drugs. I mean, why else would you say that there's not more than two sexes on earth? I, I could have sworn the most I said male and female created he them. Male and female created he them. I mean, I don't get it. Can y'all help me out with that? I mean, put... If you got some information that I'm missing out on, uh, put a comment in the chat. Let me know because I, I'm lost on this one. I, I look, I'm I'm reading in the scriptures. It said male and feet. Wow. Uh, yeah. You know what? It, it's got to be the drugs. Let me read this. A nine-page Instagram post. Nine pages. Is shared by the 28-year-old singer this week expressed staunch opposition to the soirees which have increased in popularity during gender reveal parties, baby showers. You know, you can't have baby showers now because you're implying that you're going to tell or or, or predict the gender of a baby. I mean, what what I thought that that's what it was for. Blue for boys, pink for girls. Now they're saying you can't do that because the child might be trans. The child might be non-binary. You got to let the child decide what they want to be. The child may come. I mean, what? Nine page Instagram posts shared by the 28 year old singer this week expressed staunch opposition to the soirees, which have increased in popularity during gender reveal parties. Expecting parents announce the gender of their baby through a, a variety of items unveiled in pink or blue. Demi's post was originally written online by a trans activist stated that basing a baby's gender on their genitalia is inconsistent science. Did you hear that? This trans activist, some, uh, uh, you know, anonymous quote, trans activist stated basing a baby's gender on their genitalia is inconsistent with science. So and, and now 
you know, it, it doesn't matter about your genitalia. A man can. OK, I, I can't even finish this. This is about to have me explode. OK, the series of text messages entitled Why Gender Reveals Are Transphobic stated such parties promote the idea that trans people are less natural than others. Yet they are. That is unnatural. What are we talking about? It's the reason why you're getting on particular pills, hormone bending pills, you know, hormone suppressing pills. It's the reason why you're going to the knife, chopping your breasts off, chopping your rod off. OK, what are we talking about? That's the natural form of which you was born in. You're doing things to create an unnatural state of being. Let's read the law. Deuteronomy 23, read verse 1. It says, Deuteronomy 23 and 1. He that is wounded in the stones or hath his private member cut off, private member cut off, shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. You're not coming in. Chop your rod off if you want to. The Most High is going to blow your head off. And they saying that that's natural? Okay. Twitter users were quick to blast the star. Oh, good, good for them. With one tweeting, FF, whatever that means, the world has gone mental. Hasbro changing Mr. Potato Head. That was another thing. You know, they, they now Mr. Potato Head is just a uh, a potato head. You know, now, now it's transphobic or you're being sexist if you make a male potato head. See how they're trying to erase the lines of gender? You know, when you go into the bathroom now, no longer are they doing the dress for the woman, straight leg for the man. You know, everything is, is all intertwined and mixed. Everything is unisex now. OK, Mr. Potato Head. So it's gender neutral. And now Demi Lovato thinks gender revealed part of the transphobia. Uh, let me read this. Transphobia is not just about prejudice against individual trans people. It's also a way of thinking that understands non trans people. Trans people are more natural, organic and erases everyone else. They, we are more natural and organic. What are we talking about? I mean, this is ridiculous. The post continues. These ideas like the gender binary fuel mistreatment of all people. Now they see how they want to be inclusive. You know, that's always like hidden code to try to, you know, gather the, uh, the the hearts and the minds of the black, Hispanic and Native Americans. That's why they just passed that law about um, civil rights equality. They want to try to piggyback on the, uh, the blood, sweat and tears of the forefathers of the Browns, blacks and Native Americans. <laughs> So when they put this in here, mistreatment of all people, that's cold to try to trigger into the minds of you blacks and Hispanics. Don't fall for it. But especially trans, see, especially trans and non-gender. See, they're more important, more especially for them. Gender non-conforming people. Gender reveals are based on the illusion that genitals equal gender and that there are only two options, boy or girl. Hello? Yeah, of course. OK, what are we talking? Are you talking about equality? Talk to me when they take us uh, out, out of the Constitution to being three fifths of, of a man. Talk to talk to me then. OK. That ain't been done yet. Then get the hell out of here. This defense erases the fact that there are boys with vaginas and girls with penises, that there are people who are neither boys nor girls. Do you hear that? This is wild. They said that now the way that standard genders are categorized now. This implies or this is erases. They said the fact that there are boys with vagina vaginas. Where where are they at? Oh, oh post op surgery. Is that what we're talking about? Or are you talking about a girl that actually is born with a vagina who now is taking on the role of a man? Get out of here and girls with penises and that there are people who are neither boys nor girls. That, what are they? Aliens, mutants, they're not born. The idea that sex is based on genitalia is inconsistent with science. Get out of here. All right. Before we go there, let me play this clip for y'all. Let me stop sharing with this one. I'm going to share with something else. This is interesting. This came on my, uh, my YouTube thread. Um... Was it yesterday? You know, you get a <laughs> yeah, Khan, Khan, Karna, uh, how was I? She's a meth head, she's high. You know, it's got to be the drugs, though. It's got to be. I mean, what are we talking about, man? Shalom, Shalom, like, what's happening, bro? Manathia, Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Um, uh, just seeing who, who who's checking in. Um, nonetheless, let me let me get to this. 
you know, you get them suggestive videos on your YouTube, right? I got this one that uh that popped up and um uh, it was very interesting. Very interesting. Senator, uh Senator Ron Paul, man. This cat went in and I I had uh brought this cat out, man, Rachel Levine, who was uh in that Scrabble gang breakdown that I did. He's O Biden's um health secretary or something like uh, uh, assistant health secretary. So he's going to be the one who's going to be dictating policies that pertains to medical uh, care, right? But Rand Paul, who's a uh, uh, senator in Texas, uh, had him under the hot seat. But check out this check out this dude answers. Rand Paul questions Rachel Levine on gender affirming care for minors. So the question now is, where does he stand at in regards to gender care for minors? Meaning. Is he in support of children getting sexual changes, being on hormones, um, you know, all of this other stuff? But um, let me be quiet. Let me be quiet. Let me let let let, let me let Rand Paul go get busy. American culture is now normalizing the idea that minors can be given hormones to prevent their biological development of their secondary sexual characteristics. Dr. Levine, you have supported both allowing minors to be given hormone blockers to prevent them from going through puberty. Do you hear that? He's already been approving minors uh, and prescribing them with hormone blockers. And you're going to see the dude who we're talking about. As well as surgical destruction of a minor's genitalia. A minor's genitalia. He said he's approved that. Minors. Destruction of meaning he, he's been affirming and, and allowing minors to have sexual uh decapitations of breasts and, and penises and all of that like surgical mutilation hormonal interruption of puberty can permanently alter and prevent secondary sexual characteristics the american college of pediatricians reports that 80 to 95 percent of prepubertal children with gender dysphoria will exp experience resolution by late adolescence if not exposed to medical intervention and social affirmation. Dr. Levine, do you believe that minors are capable of making such a life-changing decision as changing one's sex? Well, Senator, thank you for your interest. In there you go. Look at this. Look at this dude. Look at this dude. This is a man <laughs> who's been appointed uh, Assistant Secretary of Health by O'Biden that is now out for the children with gender hormone uh, bending uh, pills and treatments, allowing sexual mutilation. And John, Ron, Rand Paul said, hey, where do you stand now with this? Are you are you good with this? Let me know. One sex. Well, Senator, thank you for your interest in this question. Um, transgender medicine is a very complex and nuanced field um, with robust research and uh, standards of care that have been developed. And if I am fortunate enough to be confirmed as the Assistant Secretary of Health, I will look forward to working with you and your office and coming to your office and discussing the particulars of the standards of care for transgender yeah, medicine. The specific question. Did you hear how he just, he just filibustered the whole damn thing? He just filibustered the whole thing. Didn't answer the question at all. Sound like he was reading from a script. You know, prepared answers. But hold on. Let me back him up a little bit. Pardon me if you hear me throw up. <laughs> the, the particulars of the standards of care for transgender medicine. The specific question was about minors. Let's be a little more specific since you evaded the question. Do you support the government intervening to override the parent's consent to give a child puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and or amputation surgery of breasts and genitalia? You have said that you're willing to accelerate the protocols for street kids. I'm alarmed that poor kids with no parents who are homeless and distraught, you would just go through this and allow that to happen to a minor. I would hope that you would have compassion for Kira Bell, who's a 23-year-old girl who was confused with her identity. 
at 14, she read on the internet about something about transsexuals. She thought, well, maybe that's what I am. She ended up getting these puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones. She had her breast amputated. But here's what ultimately she says now. And this is a very insightful from decision from someone who made a mistake, but was led to believe this was a good thing by the medical community. I made a brash decision as a teenager, as a lot of teenagers do, trying to find confidence and happiness, except now the rest of my life will be negatively affected, she said, adding that the medicalized gender transitioning was a very temporary, superficial fix for a very complex identity issue. What I'm alarmed at is that you're not willing to say absolutely minors shouldn't be making decisions to amputate their breast or to amputate their genitalia. For most of our history, we believe that minors don't have full rights and the parents need to be involved. So I'm alarmed that you won't say with certainty that minors should not have the ability to make the decision to take hormones that will affect them for the rest of their life. He said this dude is refusing to acknowledge because what they're trying to do is allow the kids to have consent and remove a parent's consent out the way. So, you know, when you have to have a uh, parent, parent or guardian consent for anything that, that, that pertains to uh, legal rights, they're trying to move that out the way so that the kids can make the decision so that they can be seduced by some counselor who says you've got, you know, ADHD, you've got all kind of different kind of confusing problems. Yes, we think that you should go through uh, uh, gender transitions. We, we should recommend you after a few counseling sessions. You know, forget mom and dad. We're going to put you on these, um, these hormone uh, blockers. You know, we're, we're going to recommend and approve you for genitalia removal surgery. Now, this dude is saying, man, just say, do you think that it's out of pocket for kids to have the ability to have consent to do some gender re reassignments and all of that? He won't answer. Here he goes. Will you make a more firm decision on whether or not minors should be involved in these decisions? Senator, uh, transgender medicine is a very complex and nuanced field. <laughs> this is why he's the devil. Yeah, I'm going right back, repeating damn near the same thing again. He still won't say yes. He still won't say no. This is the devil. Uh, and if confirmed to the position of Assistant Secretary of Health, I would certainly be pleased to come to your office and talk with you and your staff about the standards of care and the complexity of this field. Let it go into the record that the witness refused to answer the question. Uh, before I uh, turn it over to Senator Murphy, I do want to say, Dr. Levine, I wanted to say I appreciated your thoughtful and medically informed response to Senator Paul's questions earlier in the hearing. Good, good Lord. And then you hear her co-sign and get the hell out of here. I mean, this, this is where we at, y'all. This is where we at. Okay, uh, let's get back. Let me see if I got anything else on this PowerPoint. Uh, I got a couple other little video clips, too, I want to play for y'all uh, before I get out of here. Uh, let's look again. Okay, so not only are they trying to remove uh, gender from the conversation, they're trying to have minors be able to have the right after they've already been infiltrated in their minds. Because you hear Rand Paul gave the example of a uh, teenager who has regrets. For going through with uh, gender reassignments, he said, "I was confused. I was jacked up. I was trying to figure out life, and I made a a, 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 um, a devastating mistake." You know, when you do that type of thing, and you can't go back, you can't go back. And this is what they're doing. He said, "Man, did you just hear this testimony? Do you have any remorse?" He's like, "No, because we push him forward." Uh, let me see. I I do got a um. I think that's all I had on that PowerPoint, but let me look and see if I got anything else. All right, hold up. All right, now check this out. This is the times that we're in right now. I think I do got another clip too I want to share, but it says waitress says she was fired from NYC eatery for not getting a COVID vaccine. So here's the times that we're living in. You know, now what we're talking about really standing up, resisting the oppression. When it comes down to job, when it comes down to employment, money, finance, ha house, hard home, I mean, a house, uh, car, home, you know, whatever. This is where the oppression is leading to. You know, if you don't bow down, if you don't take the jab, you could lose your job. And I know I know people personally who's got careers that's on the line if they don't take this shot, you know, and decisions going to be made. They're, they're standing firm. All praise to the most high saying, hell no. 
It is what it is. You know, that's faith. Knowing that you can be put out on your own somewhere, that you can be left without some things that you you, you got to grown accustomed to, you know, and then you use your faith. And the most high blesses you for that to say, look, you was ready to step out on your own. Look at Abraham. He told Abraham, man, you got to leave Ur Chaldees. It's all kind of wickedness and idol worship, all kind of stuff going on over here. You're going to leave here and going to establish a, a, a great nation. And I got a promised land better than where you at right now waiting for you. Now step on out and go get it. Abraham said, man, let's pack up and go. I don't know what's on the other side, but I'm gone. This 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 little uh, chick right here. It's a, a New York City waitress says she was fired from a popular Brooklyn restaurant after choosing not to get the uh, C-19 vaccine for fear. It might hurt her chances of getting pregnant. So she's concerned about infertility or issues with infertility when it comes down to the um to the um to the jab. Now, that's a valid concern, because why were they? restricting pregnant women from getting a shot children that was under 16 they couldn't do it because they had no testing they had no data to support the fact that these nano uh nano biparticles that's coming through the mrna delivery system through this um through this jab couldn't uh harm the dna and hurt the cells so they they said no no we can't do that so she's got a valid reason uh, Bonnie Jacobson, 34, told the Post that the management at Red Hook Tavern canned her on Monday because she balked at getting the, sh the shot immediately. It was shocking to me. She said Wednesday, I went through the stages. I'm hurt. I'm in shock. And then I got mad. Jacobson, who has been married since October 2019, stressed that she's not an anti-vaxxer. See, and then she got to qualify it. You know, and I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm not a bad guy. I, I, I just want more research done. You know, no, you could just stand on your own too and say, no, I don't trust it. I don't want it. We're talking about an experimental, uh, experimental shot that's utilizing technology that's never been practiced before on humans. And we're seeing the death tolls rise. Case in point, I'm going to show you all in a second. Okay. Let me finish this up. Uh, fully supports people who are uh, okay. Jacobson, who has been married since October 2019, stressed that she's not an anti vaxxer and fully supports people being inoculated. But she says she wants to wait for more research on the coronavirus vaccine's possibilities effect on fertility. Okay, so jobs are getting lost if you don't get the if you don't get the jab if you don't fully submit. This is what they're willing to do. This is where they're ready to go to. Okay, uh, hold on. I got a video clip. I'm trying to. Share. Let me. Uh... Where is she at? Not at all, Dr. Patel. Thanks. Afternoon to Pfizer to a plant. Okay, Afternoon check. to Pfizer to a plant in Michigan. Pfizer has announced it is beginning vaccine trials in pregnant women. The first such trial. Did you hear that? They're beginning the trials now for the pregnant women. You know, earlier this year, first of all, they got the vaccine done or got the jab done. You know, without uh, doing enough human clinical trials. They got this thing done in less than a year, which is damn near impossible. And then in between those times, they said, look, kids under 16, uh, pregnant women off limits. But guess what? They want everybody. They want everybody. OK, like I said on Monday, Joe Biden said, quote. When it's your turn to get the jab, just get it, man. Come on, man. <laughs> to include expected mothers here in the U.S. Uh, this comes amid the debate over vaccine safety for pregnant women with no clear guidance from the CDC on whether they should get back vaccinated. But the CDC does say that pregnant women who contract COVID do have an increased risk of complications. That is a very important signal. Uh, a new study also is being led by the University of Washington researchers finding that the COVID infection rate is 70% higher in pregnant women. 
and even higher for pregnant women of color. Oh, even higher for pregnant women of color. Oh, they ain't forget you, Negro women. They ain't forget about you, uh, Hispanic women, Native Americans. Oh, yeah, you on the list. They want you. They want them babies that's inside of us. Inside of y'all, I should say. <laughs> Let me get right. Nobody's safe. They want the fetus. They want the woman. You know, everybody's getting it. Joining me now, Dr. Pavita Patel, former health policy director in the Obama administration, who has been on the front lines and uh, knows very well the problems in communities of color here in D.C. So what are these trials going to teach us about the safety of vaccinating pregnant women? Yeah, Andrea, good to be with you. It's incredibly important that they do these trials because it has been a population, pregnant women, breastfeeding, lactating women, as well as just in general, Andrew, we've had a history of not even including women in trial. I will applaud all the manufacturers. They've done a really good job around kind of gender as well as healthcare, ethnicity, and race. One in three of the Pfizer and Moderna participants were of a diverse origin. So that's great, but this is a population. And frankly, Andrea, it's the conversations we're having with women, not even those who are pregnant, but they're hoping to get pregnant. And they're asking very important questions like, what if I do get pregnant and I get my first dose? Will this cause any harm to the baby? You see, that does the same thing to Edomar that just got fired, had questions. Here this doctor is saying these are legitimate questions that people are asking. Apparently not for the Red Hook Tavern. They said, look, if you ain't on the program, we got to fire you. So far, we've also had a number of people who have already received the vaccine in real world time, Andrea, that have been pregnant. So we actually have increasing data that demonstrates that it is effective as well as safe, but the inclusion in purposeful randomized controlled trials will also help put to rest the skepticism that I think is out there, as well as answer important questions about- All right, enough of the lies from the talking heads, okay? Because uh, as we see, there's not going to be no stopping, no stopping them from lying. Okay, so we hear we hear that lie. All right, now let me get let me get one more for y'all. One more. Hold on, where's that other one? Uh, let's see. we anticipate and hope we'll get in the UA, when will we be able to say we can vaccinate children? Children in the high school range and children in the elementary school range. You know from... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here's Dr. Frankenstein himself. Now, doesn't this dude own uh, uh, Moderna? Or doesn't he have some stake in Moderna? You know how much money Moderna made when them stocks went up, when they got granted the rights to uh, be the one to push the, uh, the, the jab? And here he goes. And all of the doctors that's in his field said this dude ain't practiced medicine in, in over damn near 25, 30 years. All he is is a talking head now and a politician. And now he says it's time to get the children. I thought they said kids was off the table. Oh, no, no. I had the article last year. They said in order for the LAUSD, LA County kids to go back to school, that's going on the same uh, list of mandatory vaccines as all the rest. They're going to put this C-19 jab in the same category as um, the MMR vaccine, as the um, uh, polio vaccine, chicken pox. They're going to put it in the same category. Okay. And as you see, my, if you see my, um, Episode three, the numbers is going down. They said it, it, we should be back to her, uh, be able to achieve herd immunity by April. But what's he talking about? He's saying we got to start having the discussion about when, how, how can we get the kids involved in this? How can we jab them up? We can vaccinate children, children in the high school range and children in the elementary school range. You know from Pfizer that they started off with the trial of 44,000 individuals down to 16-year-olds and then progressed it down to 12-year-olds. 
So what they're going to be doing in, in, in April, starting in April, they're going to be studying 12-year-olds down to five to six-year-old. That will take likely one year to get the, uh, the uh, information on that likely. 12 down to five down to six you see how the number just keeps dipping you know there's the no, there's nothing safe with them remember five and six years old that's uh uh kindergarten and that's elementary school age okay so you're looking at school age uh daycare age they jabbing them up all right he said it's gonna take a year to get the science down get the data down which again any uh uh any person in the medical field dealing with the sciences uh, and dealing with uh, vaccine research, they all say clinical trials take anywhere from seven to 10 years before it's approved. They're trying to get this thing done, even with the kids, within a year. Not until the first quarter. However, we anticipate data on high school age individuals, namely individuals 12 years old to 17 years old, by the beginning of the fall maybe not exactly coinciding with the first day of school but sometime in the fall we will have that moderna as you know started off with already 18 year old they are now currently enrolling 12 to 17 year olds uh oh hold on okay because you know what i know i'm not tripping flashback with me to monday y'all Flash back with me to Monday and uh, remind me if uh, I'm tripping. Where's he at? I could have sworn I had. Uh, he's further down. He's hiding. I know I'm not tripping. Hold on. Here he goes. The hypocrite himself. Oh, Biden. Uncle Joe. Good old Uncle Joe. Let me see if I got something up here for you. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Now, we just got through hearing Anthony Fauci. Anthony Faulty. Yeah, maybe Faulty is a good little name for him. Okay, Dr. Frankenstein over there. He says uh, we need to start figuring out how we're going to get these kids uh, shot up. He said Moderna's already got the high schools locked down. So we already put out there 16 and and uh younger was off limits now we got to convince the people they're on they're on target 15 12 uh seven six five we got them but look what oh biden said a few days ago he reassures a second grader afraid of getting the c19 don't be scared honey don't be scared honey it's okay that's why i said on monday what the hell are you grown folks scared of if he's telling them telling the little girl you ain't got to worry about it you'll be okay there's a study that just came out of Boston. They said that if you get the virus, you've got a one in, and, and take it home is a one in 10 chance of those in the house getting it. it. Look it up. There's a new study that just came out of Boston. It says if you have the C word and you come home and you have it in the house, People dwelling in the house have a one in ten, one in ten chance of, of 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 getting it. But why are they after the kids? After after uh, President O'Biden said this Tuesday in the town hall, he sought to reassure a second grader worried about getting the C nineteen, telling her that young children are the safest group of people in the world. Don't be scared, honey. Don't be scared. You're going to be fine, and we're going to make sure mommy's fine too. See how the devil does. Jessica Salas, a graphic designer from Milwaukee, told Biden that her two young children often ask her about whether they will get C-19 and die. Uh, she told I mean, she stood next to her eight year old daughter and she spoke about how the pandemic pandemic, I should say, is especially frightening for, frightening for children who don't fully understand what's happening. Kids don't get COVID very often. Is it? Yeah. Well, hold on. Let me read that again. 
Kids don't get COVID very often, but all the schools are shut down. Everybody's quarantined. The kids is locked down, going crazy, stir crazy with cabin fever in the homes right now, you know, wilding out. And now they're talking about, oh, no, the kids, the kids are in danger. We got to we got to get this plan rolled out within a year to get them all jabbed up. And hopefully by fall, we'll have enough information so that we can get it started. That's why I said I'm not saying exactly at the, at the school year, but. We're hoping to have this the, the data in so we can get the jabbing. Kids don't get COVID very often. It's unusual for that to happen. They don't. The evidence so far is children aren't the people most likely to get COVID. Quote and quote by President Obama, O Biden. Okay, what are we talking about? This is madness. But white men speak with forked tongue, as usual. Okay, and wound up uh, getting this woman fired because she said i'm concerned about you know getting pregnant with with my baby and they saying don't worry honey <laughs> you're you gonna get this shot you want another job you want to be able to have that family so that you can support it you, you're gonna get you're gonna get the jab don't worry honey <laughs> that, that that's how he's working but, but that's the devil though okay uh one other thing i'm gonna show y'all before i get up out of here um where are we at Let me see here. Let me share this with y'all because uh, this is important. Some of y'all may have seen this. Some of y'all may have not. But this is uh, the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System or VAERS. This is from the CDC. This is how they keep track of any adverse issues that are occurring from those who get the jab. OK, now you're going to be wondering, what's the common theme that we're seeing over here? Uh Oh, 18, 29 year old, somebody died. Patient received a vaccine on 12, 22 without complication. It's reported today that the patient was found unresponsive, subsequently expired at home January First, I mean, excuse me, January 11th, 2021. So they had a couple weeks, boom, dropped dead. Ask, uh, the, the, ask the family of Hank Aaron, what happened to him? You know, another one, deaf, 18, 29 year old, on the day for, on the day due for a second dose. Patient was found unresponsive at work in the hospital. Patient's pupils were fixed and dilated. Full ACLS was initiated for 55 minutes with multiple rounds of bicarb, calcium chloride, magnesium. I mean, look, okay, maybe, maybe I'm tripping. Let's scroll down. Oh, look at more. Deaf. Deaf unexplained. 40 to 49 year old man. I mean, um, uh, individual. They don't give the sex. They give the whole breakdown of what happened. Oh, yeah. She had no pre-existing medical conditions, no allergies, no history of anaphylaxis, no bleeding disorders, blood thinning medication, nothing. We're, we're, why, why are they not reporting these things? What's going on? Uh, look at this. Patient unexpectedly died. Oh, really? He wasn't expecting it, huh? No known signs or symptoms. But guess what they always rule out? Couldn't have been the jab. Let's move down some. Expired in her sleep, dead, 40 to 49 year old, was at work on January 26 and collapsed. No known complaints at the time. CR, C, uh, CRP was initiated, immediately transported to ER and pronounced dead. Found a deceased in her home, another one dead, 50 to 59 year old. I mean, I'm going to just scroll it down. Another one. Death, 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 death. Massive heart attack. Residents found unresponsive. Patient was vaccinated December 30th, 2020. Prime dose of Moderna vaccine. Isn't that what uh, Anthony Fauci was just trying to uh, promote for the kids? Safe and effective. You sure you still want to get your kids this shot? Y'all better wake up. You better pass this information on to all your disbelieving family and all of them and tell them, look, I got some information from a brother or you can just watch a video. And he's going to show you that you better second guess and start thinking about uh, the livelihood of your household. What, what's going on here? Let's scroll down just a little bit more. Uh, deaf, deaf, deaf. Resident expired. Low oxygen, low O2, deaf positive for C19 on 112.21. Dies on 116. 
uh, what what a shaking and then became unresponsive. Patient deceased, death, death. I mean, do do we need to see any more? Do we need to see any more? Are, are you convinced now? I hope so. I hope so. This is where we at, y'all. All right. Thank y'all for tuning in. Shabbat shalom to my brothers and sisters of Israel. All right. Your man's about to get up out of here. Uh, most high willing for those that's, um, you know, subscribe to the channel. Be in tune tomorrow. Uh, Messengers of the Covenant will be going in tomorrow uh, for our Shabbat class. Uh, most high willing should be starting around 3.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you're in the Eastern Time, that's 6.30 might be close to the end of the Shabbat for you, but um, still tune in if you have opportunity. Um, but outside of that, we give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High and the Son, Yahweh Shai. And with that, don't shoot the messenger.